What's up everybody? It's Goose. I'm going to do an update on my nanny herd on my boss's property. Um, I had them on my neighbor's property for about seven weeks. Um, we rotated them through uh, four little, I don't say pastures, but they wasn't any pastures, all wooded. Um, uh, but four wooded uh, paddock slots. Um, but we rotated them through there four times. Uh, they were there for seven weeks. And uh, now they've been on my boss's property for right at eight weeks now. Ash, just you go under that fence, we're going to have a problem. Fence is off right now, so I can show it to y'all. Um, so I started back here because this is the uh, back of the pen and the back of the property. Um, this is where I pulled my reels out from um, I just tied them on these uh, insulators and then I uh, I pulled from here and I got my reels on the other side I'll show y'all um, I showed y'all this uh, this pin before I showed y'all how that back fence was falling over um, picked it up uh, put some t-post in and I uh, ran a uh, I used this old yellow wire just because I already had it and I didn't want to buy more white wire. So, uh, we got, I got one strand all the way down and the second strand, I just have it here because, uh, the fences, there's a big hole right here and it's falling over. Um, need to fix it better, but it's working. Nobody's got out. So, um, I'll probably wait and fix it this winter. Uh, so to power that yellow wire, I got these alligator clips clipped from, the main fence um, to that yellow wire uh, so pulled from there and uh, goes all the way down there which I'm not gonna walk it I'm gonna try to keep from making this video real long uh, goes way down there and it cuts back in I will walk over here a little bit so I just got to show y'all what they've done um, they really cleared it out I mean um, there's not really any forage left for them uh, I've been cutting down some trees for them but they have a bell of hay and I've been giving them uh, about 15 pounds of feed a day I'm trying to get them real nice and healthy and fat because um, it's almost breeding season so which I, uh, I think I'm going to push it back. I'm not real sure when I'm going to breed. Uh, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to do uh, December 1st. Um, but, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you silly dog. Uh, she's, she's still a puppy. She's kind of, she likes jumping on you sometimes. That's why she just got scared. She, she put her paw on me and I turned around. Which is fine if you put your paw on me. You just got to quit jumping on people. Um. She jumps on my nephews and they laugh about it and let her do it. So that's, she's kind of in the habit of doing it now, which I've been getting on to them and her about it. So I need to break her out of that. Uh, but this is one of Ladybird's puppies um, out of the last uh, litter. This is Molly. Um, they traded me two goats for her. So Molly's out here because their dog's getting old. Um, I don't know if I've shown Butterball at all. I haven't really... They have a few goats and chickens and dogs. Uh, I just haven't really shown that because it's just not my thing. Um, but anyway, uh, Butterball's getting old. He's uh, he's almost eight years old now, so they needed a pup up in training, and she's she's been doing good besides uh, kind of jumping on people. Um, that's not really her fault because they're letting her do it. <laughs> she really likes her goats. She's almost too friendly with them. Um, but yeah, that's ladies, Lady Bird's puppy. She's, she's been doing good out here. Little Nancy. Nancy was really scratching her head on my knee earlier. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they've, six foot down, they have just cleared it. Um, so I've been giving them grain and, uh, they have a bell of hay because they've, there's just no forage for them to eat. If I had somewhere I could put them with forage, I would, but um, I just don't have anywhere to put them right now. Uh, I'm running three herds. I have my nanny herd here, and then I have the uh, 
I have Macho Man and the Bucklings at my house, and then um, the Dolings are on Mary's property. Um, so let me go up front and show you all that. So I'm over here at the corner now. We was way back there. That's the back of the property. Um, and then that's where it turns, and that's the, the front of the pen. I'll show you all that, but I want to show you all this uh, forge over here, too. I mean, they just they destroyed it. They did it. It's just amazing what they do. Just stripped every bit out, out of it. Um, and there's, there's 16 nannies in here. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, five, five faint nannies. Well, six. I'm keeping one. Um, the three mini goats right here. And uh, the eight big goats. No, seven big goats. Yeah, okay. So 16 nannies out here. Um, which I kind of already said it. Um, so uh, I'm about to make some changes to my goat herd um i've decided i'm gonna go 100 percent kiko uh i'm gonna work on getting into the registered kikos um simply because they're just worth more money um of course they're hardy and they they do good out on pasture um that's why i got into the breed but um registered kikos i mean they they really bring some money once you get the the right genetics um, so that being said, what I'm going to do is my three mini goats. These are my first goats. Um, Luann, my OG, my original goat. Uh, she was my first goat ever. Um, little Nancy right here, my little friendly goat. Um, she was my first Nigerian dwarf. Um, Luann's a pygmy goat. And so Nancy was like my third goat. Because I bought Luann, and then I bought a wild pygmy, and then I bought Nancy. Um, and Ash is this little goat with the attitude for days. Um, she was my first bottle baby. Um, the second goat I bought, the wild one, had her, and then um, decided she didn't want to be a mom. So um, Ash just was my first bottle baby, and I was working construction every day. So um, <laughs> she went on the job site with me for three months because I didn't I didn't have any little goats to put her with the the big goats were beating her up um, so yeah she, she she rode in the back of the truck every day in a cage and went to work with me for three months and uh, by then she got a little bigger and I put her out with the big goats um, <laughs> but that's the way that's why she is the way she is because um, she was around way too many humans and Anyway, that, that goat's a funny goat. Um, so these three, they're, they're my pets. Um, these two are going into retirement, Nancy and Luann. I mean, Nancy and Luann. Um, Luann got a uh, mastitis last year, and that's, it, it's, I can't really explain it, but it, it you know, something wrong with the udder. Um, her udder got hard and it quit uh, producing milk on one side. Um, so I had to treat that every day, uh, twice a day for a week. And, uh, the medicine for that was like a hundred bucks. So, um, she just has a big, it happens to goats with these big floppy udders and that's what she has. Um, so I don't want to deal with that again. And she is, um, she's going on eight years old. Luann will be, uh, eight years old this Christmas. Wow. That's crazy. Um, there she is. <laughs> I put the camera on, you quit doing it. She likes rubbing her head on my knee. Um, so, yeah, Luann's getting old. She had an udder problem. Nancy's just a year younger than her. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and retire her. She did fine last year, but I'm going to go ahead and retire her. Um, Ashes, she's she did great, and she's a little younger. Um, Ashes has to be coming up on five years old. Um, so I'm going to breed her to a faint and billy this year. Um, I might breed her again next year. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how she does this year, but she's healthy and fine. So I'm going to breed her. Um, the fainting goats, the fainting goats are for sale. Um, I have them online for sale, uh, right now. Somebody is supposed to come look at them this afternoon. That's, uh, really why I'm making this video today. Cause I need to 
show y'all the herd before I get rid of them. Um, so the the five younger uh, fainting nannies, um, I'm gonna sell them. Her, her even uh, this goat's hilarious. That's the one that faints all the time. I hate to get rid of her, but it is what it is. Um, little white goat and these two little goats in the back. Um, getting rid of them. Um, this over here, this is Jane. She's a fainting goat too, but you can see she is quite a bit bigger than these fainting goats. Um, I mean, that's my biggest goat right here. And this is her next to her. So that's her next to a Kiko. Um, so she's uh, almost as big as the Kikos. So I'm going to keep her and uh, breed her to my buck and see see what she does. Uh, she had big kids this year. She had big twins. Um, they're, they're big, healthy guys right now. So uh, I'm going to keep her. She's a good goat. She has a nice build to her. She's nice and thick. Um, like I said, she had pretty heavy kids. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure she had like eight pound kids. So Nancy just came up and had butted the dog. Uh, so I'm going to keep Jane and breed her. And if she does good, I'll, I'll keep her around. Um, Nancy is so funny. She's about to hit this dog again. Um, uh, so yeah, getting rid of the fainting goats. Um, my three little goats. Well, two of them are going into retirement. So they'll be separated from the herd. They're, uh, my three little goats, they're actually going to go in the pen by the barn. Um, uh, and the, uh, just go ahead and finish this out. The big nannies, um, I'm, I'm getting ready to, uh, go build a, here's my material. Just came over and picked up some pallets and some wood, two by fours. Um, I'm about to go build a shelter on Mary's property. Um, and one day this week or next week, I'll be taking my, my eight meat nannies. Of course, I have the one fainter, but um, my eight, I don't even know what to call them now because they're Kiko crosses, Kikos, and the fainting goat. But anyway, my eight um, meat nannies, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send them to Mary's property with the dolings, um, which I'm slowly getting that more opened up because um, they're... I'm just out of forage here. There's no forage here, so I'm going to go ahead and move the meat nannies. Um, then they'll be right down the road, and they'll be ready to bring to my property for breeding. Um, three mini goats are going to go by the barn. Uh, and uh, the five that I'm selling, they're just going to stay in this pen until I sell them, um, which hopefully today. Um, but I'm not counting on it. We'll see. But anyway, they're going to stay here till I sell them. And then after I sell them, I'll give this area a little rest. Um, and then I'm probably going to bring some of the bucklings here. Um, that's the plan. We'll, we'll see. I got a got multiple things going on, obviously. Um, so I don't talk forever. I need to hurry up now. I probably should have made two videos again. Uh, so anyway, that's what's going on with the nannies. Um, Two of them going into retirement, um, selling the five little fainters, and then I'm going to keep eight of them and breed them to Macho Man um, this late fall. I haven't decided it. it last year I did uh, beginning of November. I think this year I might do beginning of uh, December, um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to show you all the water, which is a little dirty. Look, they'll be getting clean new water tomorrow. I have two of these. Um, <laughs> But I've had people here ask me why they're under here. They are under this hot wire because Molly loves water. There's a pond back there, and I figured, you know, she'd just play in the pond, and this water would be fine. No. Um, these whole 20 gallons, I came out here and filled them. I had one at that time. Um, came out here and filled it up one afternoon. Came out here the next morning, and it was completely gone. Molly likes playing in water troughs, huh? Yeah, you, you do, you silly dog. Uh, so I put them under the hot wire and I haven't had any problems. Um, so that fixed that for me. Uh, so I'm at the front of the pen now. I'm gonna hurry up and scoot it because I got really things I want to show you are in the back. I just sat here and talked forever about what I'm doing with this nanny herd. I can talk about goats. <laughs> uh, so here's uh, the front of the pen. I got other things to show, man. Um, I got this uh, Parmac 30 mile uh, energizer off right now. Um, I'm running all this with one three foot ground rod. Um, 
and if you look at the alligator clips how I clipped it together um, the top wire is not hot um, if you have big tall goats they might touch the top wire um, but my little goats if they ever accident if they touch a wire it's on accident and they touch the bottom one um, so the top one's not hot uh, just because that energizer can't power it um, it's, it'll power three, but four, it won't, it won't push the voltage through. Um, and these wires are they're like 1,320 foot long. Um, so they're the PowerFlex uh, mixed metal uh, poly braid. Uh, so this is a Greg Judy style. Well, I made some modifications, but I'm not gonna go over it. If you wanna figure out this dog feeder, uh, go look on Greg Judy's, Greg Judy's channel. Um, so it's just a cage with and i can drag it around with the four-wheeler um i built it on cedar skids um but there's a 11 oh, this dog is climbing on me this dog is climbing <laughs> quit no you, you're not supposed to do that no she can't she just can't help herself uh so this is a 11 inch gap molly the man's gonna headbutt you um, the dog can climb in there and the goats can't. Um, I usually put a feeder in there, but all my feeders are in use. So I just come out here and I, I pour uh, her food on the ground every day. So, um, Molly, you're, you're too much sometimes. You're just too much. Um, I got their mineral feeder, which it's low. They might have finished it yesterday. Uh, I think they did. Um, got to get some more mineral in there today. Um, they always have free choice <laughs> loose mineral this dog's trying to trip me um okay so i need to let me show y'all this right here and then i'm gonna go to the back because i just sat here and talked for too long go figure um all right so you can see my trail just goes right in the woods and i've been clearing it out and uh making it wider uh, I'm gonna go out here towards the middle and get back to y'all. All right, so I've been out here with my pole saw, uh, getting rid of the little stuff. These uh, medium-sized trees, slightly bigger trees. Uh, I'll cut those with my chainsaw. But um, when I take the goats out of here this winter, I'll take this uh, poly braid down, and then I'll come through here and get rid of these uh, trees that are gonna fall on the fence and get tangled up and everything. Um, this was all super thick right here. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't really walk through here. Uh, cut all this down with my, the lighting's terrible. Cut all that down with my pole saw, and I've just been stacking it over here, uh, for the goats to eat. I like to make a little brush pile, and then the stuff you put on top, they'll, if you just put it on the ground, they'll stomp half of it in the ground and pee on it, and they, they won't hardly eat any of it. Um, if you stack it up like that which is kind of old, so it's a bad example, but I mean, they eat almost all of it because it's not on the ground um, getting peed on. Um, so I've cleared all this out. I'm just working on making this trail wider. Um, get that off my fence. Maybe I should walk slower so y'all can see this stuff. Um, I really need to clear this little area uh, but I need a bigger saw to see the trees are a little bigger here. I'm going to take all these out. I'm, I'm trying to make it where I can get my four-wheeler and little uh, five-by-eight trailer through here, um, at least. But, uh, yeah, just a lot of clearing. Um, to ha I was coming out here and doing it every day, but... Most of the little stuff over here that I can cut with the pole saw is gone. I could, I could get rid of this stuff, but it, it's so thick out here, it just gets tangled up and falls on the fence, and the goats are trying to get it, and it, it's just a pain in the butt. There's a, I got to come out here and take care of that tree too. Once, once these goats are gone, knucklehead kids did that, so. It's stuck in there pretty good, so I ain't worried about it, and it's still connected, but I definitely need to take care of that pretty soon. <clears throat> Plan on getting out here with my chainsaw in a 
few days, either this week or next week, so I'll probably take care of that then because I don't need that to fall on any of my goats. Um, so here's the back of the property. All right, so here, you see I just ran through here. Um, yeah, this is off. Uh, came over here, got some insulated uh, scrap copper wire. I just use this because it's free. I, I picked this stuff up on the job site. Actually, most of this came from tearing my tearing that old house down on my property when I got there. But uh, you see, I just attached it to the tree, four of them. Then made a loop on this side, and then I attached my reels and pulled the slack out and reattached it. Pulled the slack out until I got it tight enough. Um, that's uh, that's working really well. Um, the they got a they got like a T post that it's a special T post for that. It's like 120 bucks. So um, I'll keep using my scrap wire. Uh, the goats think I need to feed them something. Um, like I showed y'all, only have told y'all only have one wire over here. I'm probably gonna put a second one. I just haven't needed to. Um, and uh, I've been working on making this back uh, path wider too. There was a bunch of dead cedar trees here, right here, right here. There's one. Um, I think I already cut one up. And then here's one. Um, but I needed a, a fire pit because I've been cutting so much stuff down. So this is all rock. That's a big old rock here. And there's a bunch of dead cedars and a bunch of dead trees over here. So, and this is the back of the property. So that's why I picked this spot. Um, we have fire pits up front, but I'm, I'm not hauling everything from back here to the front to burn it. Uh, I'll burn it right here. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everybody's doing really well. Like I said, I have been giving them more grain than usual, so, which they eat a lot of these leaves that fall. I mean, they're, they're all so fat right now. I'm probably going to cut grain back a little bit, um, which when I take everybody out here and I just have the fainting goats in here, I might just quit feeding them. I mean, there's, as long as these leaves are falling on the ground and, uh, the acorns are starting to fall. So a few goats in here, um, they'll be able to feed themselves if I leave them a uh, bell of hay so anyway that's what i got going on um i'm about to thin out the herd and focus on these kikos um just because they're worth more money um the fainting goats are actually my favorite they're uh they're way easier to keep i i really think i could keep them in with <laughs> silly dog. i think i could keep them in with two hot wires um but they just don't sell um which if anybody wants them, I, I have them listed for 150 right now. I'm not going to take any less. Um, but it's, it's cheap for a goat. I can't, um, they just, they aren't worth that much. Um, they're not, they're not that uh, in demand, I guess. So, you know, the market is the market. I like fainting goats, but I can't, can't hardly sell them for anything. So we're going to get in these uh, registered Kikos. So, uh. I sat here and rambled and made a 20 minute video by accident <laughs> so anyway that's the update i'm gonna go to mary's and build this uh uh shelter um and i'll keep y'all updated uh i'll show y'all when i move these uh nannies over to mary's place because that'll be interesting they'll probably pair back up with their kids um they they seem to remember each other it's <laughs> but that's the update. I'll see y'all later. Goose out. <laughs>